So the next thing to talk about is these uh, kind of bongo percussion elements. And if we just listen, there's two types of things going on here. So we've got this uh, delayed effects version and then we've just got the original one that's playing some slightly different grooves. So really simple stuff. And these, these are actually, I've created a sampler instrument here with different types of bongo hit. Rather than pitching one up and down, I think it works a little bit more naturally if you just have two different hits. And then this one's going and with this delay on here, I think this is like a half note delay. So sending to a half note delay and to uh, this plate reverb. And then I'm also with loads of my elements, I'm sending them to this uh, exciter just to make them a bit brighter. And then the other bongo element is uh, this effects thing. I'm not exactly how sh sure how they create the original, but it's I'm using this phase uh, mistress from Sound Toys, which is such a good plugin. And it's allowed me to get pretty close to uh, what's happening in the original. And the thing that's really making these bongos work is actually this half note delay that I just talked about. And what's really cool, and I, I kind of fat figure this out in this track just from studying his work, is if you have uh, elements that span a half note and then you have a half note delay on them, you get this really nice repeating kind of section. And that really takes me perfectly onto this ARP element here, which is just playing up the scale. So I'm doing uh, an ES2 patch here, which is actually a really good synth, but it's super underrated in Logic, but I really like it with this kind of stuff. And it is this, if without this half note delay, it's cool, it's going to a big reverb as well. So the next thing to focus on is the pad and I'm playing this uh, chord. It's an E flat seven, nine sus four. So it's quite a random chord. I don't even know how I figured out that this was what was playing in the original, um, but somehow I've managed to reverse engineer it. There we go. It is a really mellow chord but it wasn't quite enough. So I've come into a wave station actually and layered like a, an airy one. Just over the top, just following that idea for kind of having two um, pads or two things working together just to give things that make things a little bit more interesting. And then I've just bounced these into audio just so I can manage them a little bit better. And these pads just sit there. They're just one chord the whole time. They don't change at all. So it's just about creating the kind of ambience, the bed that the whole track sits in. And this is the lead next. I've done a whole bunch of stuff to this lead, but the, the actual pattern is so simple what it's doing. That's the main repeating figure. And then kind of cleverly, there's, there's these gaps and then it comes in this. So it's just, the, this is the main thing that keeps going and going. And then there's a few other little embellishments that start happening. So I haven't quite nailed the sound with my lead and it's a little bit like jarring the one 
I created, but it's as close as I could get. Just using the kind of native stuff in Logic is is um, what I was really trying to do for this project. Um, so I'm not really going to get into the synthesis of this sound because it's like a whole tutorial in itself trying to make these leads, but it's definitely about just pulling the release out actually on these, um, pulling the release out and letting the sound sustain and just controlling the filters. And I've done a whole bunch of processing here as well, just to edge myself closer and closer towards the um, the one in the original track. And then there's, there's these really nice little chord elements as well. Which sound a little bit weird on their own there, but they, they really add. And you can hear there just from the few elements that I've gone through, the way he's piecing it all together is he's not using too many different things, but just a few elements well placed and well arranged really create this, this epic track. Uh, so there's this one other thing. This is just on this drop here. If I go to his original, he just has something right in the background. So it sounds a bit weird on itself, but layered in, it sounds a lot nicer. And in this middle section here, something a little bit different starts happening um, with some of these chord elements. And I couldn't recreate exactly what he did. His sounds really, really cool here. This is probably my favorite part of the track. So I've done something a little bit different here just because I was never going to be able to figure out exactly what he was doing. So I've just done a few kind of matching chords. And this one, this is definitely got some uh, filter kind of movement is what you're hearing there. That kind of drag. It sounds not bad actually. So that's what I kind of did for my one. Okay, and then the next one is the vocal. Now the vocal was so hard to even get anything close to the original and it's just such a wicked like raw sample. Such like an emotional voice there. Even in the, all you need is one sample like that, but I have no idea where the original came from. But what I did do with mine, is take this was just like it's got some pitch bend stuff happening so i've obviously like sent this to, to massively to a reverb to two different reverbs actually as well as to that exciter so lots of reverb and i'm brightening up a little bit as well but if i come into this original um sound it's just like a one sustained um vocal note that i've taken from like a splice sample pack or something like that but to give it a little bit more life is all about doing this uh pitch bend and if you're looking here i'm in this actual rather than being in the track automation you've got to click this thing to come to region automation and then you can select um pitch bend for this actual uh kind of channel And I've also, just from listening to it, I remember I did a little bit of vibrato. So I'm doing a fade on this LFO and then it's starting to wobble the um, the vocal a little bit. And I'm doing a little bit of tremolo with the volume. So um, they're doing the same rate. They're doing an eighth note kind of wobble, but you can hear it come in.
It just starts to wobble a little bit and, and tremolo, vibrato and pitch bends are things you can use to bring quite boring standard splice samples to life a little bit more and I didn't get as good as the original one but I think I did quite a good job just to get a vocal working um, with this style of track really. And then I think the next most important thing is down here is this element here, which is another really cool thing, which is there's a weird pitch bend lead. And if we listen to the original again, it's just got so much life when things are moving like that and bending, but it's really hard to do. I remember spending ages and ages similar to the vocal, messing with the uh, the pitch bend here. And ended up with these really cool sounding uh, kind of pitch bend. It just brings things to life actually when you when you put pitch movement in. So it's got this, this one here, which is this, um, this up and down movement you can see here. And then I've also got this other one, which is just coming um, from low to high. So he's using a few different uh, pitch bend elements and I'm almost sure he would have just done these maybe live and resampled them from a synthesizer. All of this stuff is just a few little kind of um, crashes, little riser crash elements. There's some little white noise things. Just giving a bit of expression to the kind of Yeah, and this one's another really cool one is this dolphin effects now. Obviously the main thing here is it's going to this uh, half note delay again and a big reverb and also this uh, exciter. So I was using that exciter a lot and then it's more phasing stuff. I mean, phasing was a really popular effect. So I stayed quite true to the style with the effects I'm using actually, because that Aphex exciter was another really popular effect uh, that you could do on the, um, the old emus. Um, and I know with this effect, I definitely pitched it around to get it to actually um, work with my tracks. So I've pitched it up. The original sound is actually like this, the original sample. So I've gone way up. And it actually sounds pretty similar to the one he used in the original. So that's my one playing over the top. It's those little dolphin sounds. So I'm not I'm not playing exactly the same thing, but it's uh, it's the same kind of idea. And then the last element to really go through is just the bass, and the bass is so simple here. It's just doing this kind of repeating pattern the whole way. It doesn't really change at all from just doing this basically the whole time. And that is the pattern. So it's a, it's like a four bar repeating pattern of bass. And I'm just using like a sign bass. I created this sign bass myself doing some, maybe some synthesis long time. So I quite like having these really long signs that I can just do kind of bring into my own projects. And I've actually just got rid of it. it had like a punchy, but I didn't want that kind of punchy hit because it was just in getting kind of interrupting the groove a little bit too much. So just like a pure sign bass is the, the really classic one um, for this atmospherical style of jungle. And then I do like Trash 2 as a plugin and just like a tiny bit of saturation um, with Trash 2 just so you can hear the sub a little bit better. And then you've got this kind of rolling groove happening.
So this is it's really simple, like the arrangement, and it's actually just taking a few elements and using them really well. And there's only so much I can really show you from me kind of walking you through this, but it's such a good thing to do yourself is to go and recreate a track you really like and do your best to sound design all the elements from scratch or sample them, but just finding your own way to kind of reconstruct the track is a really good exercise to do. One final thing I quickly want to talk about is just some really helpful tips in Logic. When you have these really vast kind of expansive projects, it becomes really hard to copy things around and to not run into problems. And so the best way I've figured out to do this is to use the marquee tool or to use this cycle area. So if I select like a cycle area like here and then I click on a track, it's going to select all of the regions that are within that cycle area. So that's one really good tip to help your selections. And then I could use Command J to join all these together. Or I could actually just use the marquee tool like this to join these regions together. And so when you've got all these tiny little sections of audio, it's much easier to make like a bigger section, which is much easier to copy and paste across your project. But actually I can see I've done these fill sections and little embellishments. And that's another thing I love to do is when I do things like this, I just color them up a little bit just so I can see something's happening there and I'm not going to ruin it. So just Alt C, bring up the color palette and just coloring specific sections to tell myself that something's going on there. Um, and you can see that I do this like all over whenever there's a little kind of trick happening, I often do something like that. And then if we go and actually look at the this like automation automation can be such a fiddly thing to work with in logic but the marquee tool is so helpful here as well and what i would do because if you were trying to select this automation you could copy that and then try and like paste it down i've got to have this track selected like copy that paste it down and then try and like move this around it's so fiddly to do something like that but with the marquee tool i can select like the bar in front of this automation to where I want to go to and then I can actually paste it on top. So if I did it from like a different point, um, you can see, or maybe I could actually go to like here, I can paste it in a different place. So this is just such a good way to really be precise with the automation and not be having to like click and drag things around, which is just so fiddly. You just want to have to do things once and then uh, use the marquee tool to copy and paste things uh, a lot more precisely. So I think that will really wrap this one up today and uh, I will be back with you hopefully next week with another tutorial um, which uh, is a little bit of a rogue surprise one um, but hopefully it will, it will go down well so yeah I will catch you very soon in that one and keep well until then. Peace.